Hello guys, I welcome you all to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem from chapter 2 of Fundamentals of Physics by Resnick Halliday. And this is the topic motion along the straight line. Now the problem says that the position of a particle moving along the x axis depends on the time according to the equation this. So the position of a particle along a straight line is given as a function of time right so this is c t square minus b t cube where x is in meters where x is in meters and t in seconds so in first part it is said that what are the units of constant c and b so is we are given this equation and as we know that uh, this equation must be consistent with units on both sides of the equation so this means that this c t square term on on the right hand side of this equation will have units of meters and this will have units of meters as well so otherwise we will not be able to subtract this term from this term right so this product and this product both have units of meter so for the solution of part a that is the units of constant c constant c so this means that c t square this product will be equal to the units of length and the units of length is meters so now if if this gives us meters and time is second right this is this is c so this is second square and this is equal to meters so from if we divide both sides of equation by second square so this will be this will cancel out and we will get c equals to meter per second square so this c has units of acceleration that is meter per second square similarly uh, for part b again b into t raised to the power 3 this must be equal to meters and similarly b and this is second to the power 3 equals to meters so the units of b will be meter per second cube so this is the units of b and this is the units of c now uh, in the problem statement it is further said that let their numerical values be 3 and 2 so c is equal to 3 and b is equal to 2 so then if we substitute those values in this equation this x will be we can write that this x is so c is 3 so this will be 3 t square minus b is 2 so 2 t cube so now once we put those constant values we have this position as a function of time like this now in part c it is said that at what times does the particle reach its maximum position at maximum positive x position so since the particle is moving along the horizontal line along the straight path and we assume that it is moving along the x-axis is so in part c we are asked to find the maximum positive position so the maximum positive position on the right hand side of uh, x equals to zero so the maximum positive position will occur when the particle starts from zero let's say and it uh, reaches some point and then it turns big or uh, its velocity equals to zero at some point so this particular point at which the velocity will become zero will give us that uh, maximum positive position or, or it may give us the minimum we can get that maximum uh, positive position by finding the velocity equation by taking the derivative of this equation so the velocity is always equal to the derivative of the position function with respect to time now the derivative of this will be 2 into 3 60 so this will be 60 minus 60 square this is the derivative of that x as a function of time this is x as a function of time and this is the velocity now that maximum positive position we we will get when the velocity is equal to zero so now when the velocity is equal to zero we can say that uh, if i take 60 common from both of these terms 
from the left hand side so we will have 1 minus t this is equal to 0 so now we can say that 6 t is equal to 0 or 1 minus t equals to 0 so now if 6 into t is equal to 0 this means that t is equal to 0 or uh, minus t is equal to minus 1 or we can say that t is equal to 1 second so now when the velocity is equal to 0 when t is equal to 0 we get this one condition and when t is equal to 1 second the velocity is also equals to 0 so now at this particular uh, two situations at these two situations we will have we may have the maximum positive position of that particle so now if I substitute t equals to 0 in this equation, so this equation will give me 0. This will give me x, this is 3 into 0 square minus 2 into 0 to the power 3, so this is equal to 0 meters. So this means that uh, at t equals to 0, this is the initial position of the particle. Now if I substitute t equals to 1 second, this is another t value which we get from this condition. So if I substitute this value in this equation, so x is equal to 3 into 1 square minus 2 into 1 to the power 3 and this will give us 1 meter. So at t equals to 1 second the particle reaches the position on the x axis at 1 meter. So let's say that somewhere here is 1 meter let's say. So from the starting position the particle starts from x uh, from t equals to 0. This is let's say t equals to 0 this is equal to t equal to 1 second so the particle travels towards the right and here its velocity becomes uh, 0 so after that uh, so the maximum positive position of the particle along the x axis is x equals to 1 meter so this is the answer of part c now in part d it is said that from t equals to 0 until t equals to 4 second what distance does the particle move so we have to find the total distance traveled by the particle from t equals to 0 until t equals to uh, 4 seconds so now if in part d from t equals to 0 until t equals to 4 second we have to find the distance traveled let's say that distance traveled is let's say s now if i find the position of the particle at x equals uh, at t equals to 2 seconds at s at t equals to 1 second the the particle is at 1 meters that we have just determined similarly at t equals to 2 seconds we need to put t equals to 2 in this equation so this will be 3 into 2 square minus 2 into 2 to the power 3 so this is uh, 3 into 2 square minus 2 into 2 to the power 3 uh, this gives me minus 4 this is minus 4 so this means that uh, the particle when the velocity of the particle becomes 0 at this particular point then it returns back and at t equals to 2 second it is at somewhere at minus 4 let's say that this part point is let's say uh, minus 4 meters at t equals to 2 second so now since in in this part d we are asked to find the distance traveled uh, from t equals to 0 until t equals to 4 seconds so let's find the position of the particle at t equals to 4 seconds so now we have to put t equals to 4 second in this equation let's say this is equation 1 so in equation 1 we have to put t equals to 4 seconds so this is 4 square minus 2 into 4 to the power 3 so this is 3 into 4 square minus 2 into 4 to the power 3 this gives me minus 80 this is minus 80 meter so now the the particle travels to the positive value of one meter distance and then it travels back and then at t equals to four seconds let's say it reaches uh, a distance of 
um, minus 80 to a position of minus 80 let's say so it reaches this particular point this is minus 80 so now we are asked to find the total distance traveled so the total distance traveled is this one meters plus this one meter so two and this is 80 so 80 plus 1 plus 1 so total distance traveled from t equals to 0 until t equals to 4 second is 82 so we can say that s the distance traveled from 0 to 4 second is 80 plus 2 and plus 2 this is 82 meters so this is the answer of part d now in part e it is said that what is the displacement between uh, t equals to 0 and t equals to 4 seconds so now part e is the displacement that is change in x between 0 to 4 seconds so this change in x will be equal to x at 4 minus x at 0 so now x at 4 is minus 80 so this is minus 80 and x at 0 is 0 we have determined that that x at 0 is 0 so x minus 0 this is minus 80 meters so since the displacement is a vector quantity the minus sign tells us that uh, the displacement vector is towards the left and it has a magnitude of 80 so the displacement is from from this initial point towards the final point this is the displacement this is that delta x now in part f uh, it is said that find its velocity at times 1 2 3 and 4 seconds so we have to find the velocity at 1 2 3 and 4 seconds so this is the velocity equation 60 minus 60 square so velocity is equal to 60 minus 60 square now part f is the velocity at one second so put t equals to 1 in this equation let's say this equation is let's say equation 2 so now in equation 2 we have to put t equals to 1 second so this is 6 into 1 minus 6 into 1 square so this is 6 into 1 is 6 minus 6 into 1 square so this is 0 right so this is 0 meter per second and we already know that this equation gave us t equals to 0 and t equals to 1 so at t equals to 0 and t equals to 1 the velocity must be equal to 0 in order to satisfy satisfy this condition so vel velocity at t equals to 2 second this is again we have to put t equals to 2 in that equation number 2 this equation this is 6 into 2 minus 6 into 2 square so this gives me 6 into 2 is 12 minus 6 into 2 square this gives me minus 12 so this is minus 12 meter per second similarly the velocity at 3 seconds so 6 into 3 minus 6 into 3 square so this is equal to 6 into 3 is 18 minus 6 into 3 square this gives me minus 36 so minus 36 meter per second square and now the velocity this is f g h and this is i the solution of f g h i right so and the so the velocity at four second so this is six into four minus six into four square so six into four is 24 minus six 24 minus six into four square this gives us minus 72 so this is from point from f until i we were required to find the velocity at t equals to 1 2 3 and 4 seconds now we are asked to find the acceleration at t equals to 1 2 3 and 4 seconds now if we take the derivative of the velocity equation once again that will give us the velocity uh, that will give us the acceleration equation so now the acceleration will be equal to dv by dt now the derivative of this equation the derivative of this equation will be 6 minus 6 into 2 12 t so 6 minus 12 t so now part j the acceleration at one second let's say this is equation 3 so now let's put t equals to one second in equation 3 so that is 6 minus 12 into 1 
this will give me minus 12 meter per second square the acceleration at 2 second again put that t equals to 2 seconds in equation 3 6 minus 12 into 2 so this will give me um, 6 minus 24 so this will give me minus 18 12 into 2 is 24 similarly this is k then l so acceleration at 3 seconds so 6 minus 12 into 3 so 6 minus 12 into 3 this gives me minus 30 meter per second square and similarly the solution of part m is the acceleration at t equals to 4 seconds so put t equals to 4 in that equation 3 so minus 12 into 4 this is equal to so 6 minus 12 into 4 this gives me minus 42 meter per second square so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems related to fundamentals of physics by Resnick Halliday.